this video, what I want to look at is consumer and producer surplus. Okay, now all consumer surpluses, it's where the consumer pays a price lower than what they'd have been willing and able to pay for the product. Okay, um, so for example, um, as a Doncaster Rovers fan, I went to a game at the weekend, it cost me £20. I would have been prepared to pay £30 to go to watch that game, which would give me £10 of consumer surplus. Okay, now the, the idea would be that consumers will keep on buying something until there is no more consumer surplus to be had. Uh, producer surplus will be where a firm gets a price above what they were willing and able to supply for. Um, so for firms, what this will mean is then that um, they will keep on producing until there is no more producer surplus to be had. So for example, um, it could be a firm selling a car. I might be prepared to accept £7,000 for it, but they actually got £10,000 for it. It would be £3,000 of producer surplus to be had. Right now, what we can do is view this in a diagram. Okay, now... We've got the demand curve first of all, and what we should be familiar with is that a demand curve will show diminishing marginal utility or satisfaction. The more you demand of something, the less you're prepared to pay. Okay, and you've got more satisfaction from the first two or three that you bought compared to the seventh, eighth, ninth that you bought, for example. Um, firms, upward slope in supply curve, prices increase you've got more incentive to produce. Now what we then get, of course, is the equilibrium point where demand is equal to supply. Right, I'm just going to draw this on first and I'll explain what it means. What we've got here is our area of consumer surplus. This triangle at the bottom is our area of producer surplus. Okay, so just to take a couple of examples along this diagram, uh, if I was here, the firm was prepared to pay, uh, so it was charged this price for the product, but they actually got P1. So the gap between P1 and their supply curve shows me the producer was they earned from selling that particular product. The next one, so this one here, we can see again that they're getting P1, the market price, but they were prepared to accept this price here. So again, the gap between the two is producer surplus. And this triangle goes all the way on until you get to the equilibrium point. And think about why it stops there. If I go beyond Q1, the firm now wants a price above what they were willing and able to supply for. In other words, there is no more producer surplus to be had. So the market equilibrium point where demand meets supply, at that particular price level we've maximised producer surplus. There's no more producer surplus to be had. Um, consumers, it's a very similar story really. Um, for this unit of output, the firm was sorry, the, the consumer was prepared to pay this price up here. They actually paid the market equilibrium price, which is the gap between here and here is the consumer surplus that they gain. Uh, when they consume this one, they're prepared to pay less because of diminishing marginal satisfaction. It's worth less in their head than what the other one was. But they're still prepared to pay a price above the market equilibrium price, which means people will buy that unit of output too. Again, if we go to the market equilibrium point, the consumer values the product at P1. That's what the business is charging for, it will buy it. But they will not go beyond Q1 at that particular price because... The consumer for this one is only prepared to pay this price, but the market price is this. There's no more consumer surplus to be had. So at the equilibrium point, we also maximise our consumer surplus. Right, now in the exam, one thing that you will get good marks for, if you can explain how a change in demand and supply could impact on consumer and producer surplus. So let's think about a market first of all, where we have this equilibrium point. OK, 
Okay, now let's imagine that there's an increase in demand in this market. So it could be, we're looking at a normal good and incomes have increased. Now what you can see then is here, if I label these different points, but A, B, and C. Now what A, B, C shows me is the original producer surplus. But as demand increases, what we can see is that the firm will earn more revenue. So this full box here will show me the revenue. But look what's happening now. They still earn A, B, C producer service, but they now earn all the way up to E and F. So their new producer surplus is A, E, F. So it shows that when demand increases, we get an increase in producer surplus. And when you think about it, it's obvious why. The firm is still willing and able to sell this product at this price. But they used to get P1, now they get P2. They're now earning more producer surplus. This could boost profits for the firm, for example. If you wanted it shaded in, uh, this was the original producer surplus, but when demand increases, they gain this area of producer surplus as well. Right now, on the other diagram, what you could do is to think about what happens when supply increases. I don't know, maybe there's been a reduction in the cost of production, which has led to an outward shift in supply. Okay, now, what we should be happy with is that, let's use a different colour, let's go for the blue. A, B, C shows me the original consumer surplus. But when supply increases or moves outward, should I say, what it will do, it will force down the market equilibrium prices to P2 and raise the output to Q2. Well, what we will now get then is this point and this point. So the new consumer surplus will be A, E, F. Which shows that when you have this outward shift in supply, you will have an increase in consumer surplus. Again, you can see the diagram. This was the original consumer surplus, but by lowering the price, it means that everyone that you buy, you can now earn more surplus, which means you gain that additional area there.